So here we're going to have a look at how we make transparency inside this TV screen so that we can put another image uh, inside the TV screen. The nice thing about this shot for it is that it's static. So when we do the masking, which is how we're going to make the transparency, we don't have to animate it in any way. We can have it static. So let's just mark this out. So mark an in point here, play this through. And I'm just using JK now to play backwards, forwards, and then holding K and tapping J to find that very last frame of this clip. So we'll drop this down to the timeline. Hold down Option just to delete that. And we'll increase the size of this so it fills the whole screen. So in here, we basically have some tools for masking out the, the TV screen. And we'll see those kind of in the effect controls. Okay. So basically up in the top left, you'll see your source, which is what we saw when we kind of double clicked on our clip. And then we've also got the effect controls, which when we're on the timeline, are the effect controls on the, the clip that we're hovering over or that we have selected. We have to have it selected. We're going to use the opacity. We want to make it transparent. We're going to use the, the free draw Bezier tool. And basically with that, we can click once here in the middle, once here, once here, once here, and, and just kind of go around. And eventually what we'll get is the reverse of what we actually want. Okay. And you can see there's a little bit of feather on the edge there, which will work quite nicely with this. So once we've got the Bezier there, we can go back in and edit it if we want to. But the key here is that we can then invert it, which makes the hole in the TV. So if I click away from this now, you'll see we've basically got a TV with a hole in it. And if we now pop this above this other clip, I think I've created a split screen behind there. So we'll just grab this clip. Oops. So this other clip is behind my other clip, which makes it hard to, to grab. So what I'm going to do is with the TV screen, I'm going to actually lock this layer, which now means that when I double click here, it's going to select the layer behind. So I just use the padlock to lock the TV screen that I've made the hole in. So now I can move this up and in here. The color's not matching perfectly uh, here. So what we might want to do just to kind of get those grays to match is desaturate it. So if we come to our effects, we'll just type in color. So we use HLS, which is hue, saturation, and lightness. And we're going to drag this, we need to unlock this. So we can just drop the saturation down on that. And we'll also apply the same one to the top one. And we'll drop the saturation down on that. Uh, but now we've kind of got a nice match there. If we select both these clips, and um, we can nest them. So we talked about zooming in on the, the TV screen. Now we can, if we hit nest, it's going to put those both into the same sequence. So now it's basically one clip. And actually the TV screen only starts partway through it. So I can just trim it down at the beginning here a bit. And I can trim it down at the end. So here you can see we've got that in the TV screen. Now the other reason for nesting it is that because it's a nested sequence, we can treat it as one clip. So if we come to the beginning here, I can now modify the scale of both of these layers at the same time. And so we're going to start a keyframe here. So here we're going to set the scale. I'm going to set a keyframe. So it's set a keyframe at the first frame of this clip. And then if I come ahead, not all the way to the end, I'm going to increase the scale of it again, which is going to zoom it in. So basically now we've changed the TV screen and it's zooming in. If we double click in here, we can still edit what's in these layers. So for instance, if we come in here, we'll grab a clip let's just flick through a few we'll grab this one of the photograph being taken on the beach drop it down below our previous clip 
in our nest. And then we're going to basically click the eyeball to turn off that first layer. And now we can rescale this second video um, to kind of fit within that TV screen. So you can see we can put different images in there even once we've made that nested sequence. And we'll just reposition this until we're happy with it. And then we just need to also look at how we crop off that section on the right. So we'll go to our effects and we'll search for crop in the effects. We'll drag crop onto the new video in the background there. And then we can crop it from the right until it fills that TV screen and we don't get the kind of overlap on the right and come back to our main sequence. And you can see we've now put that video inside our old school TV. So you can see you've got a lot of nice flexibility um, when you're editing in this way. Uh, the red bar that we saw before is the, the render bar and I just hit enter to, to render it all so it plays back more smoothly and a high quality. So hopefully this is useful. Um, if you have any questions about Premiere Pro or about Final Cut Pro, about Photoshop or InDesign, then do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.